Welcome back. We are here on eToro looking at the commodities market and the precious metals market. And we'll start, start off by looking at uh, WTI oil. Uh, as you can see, we uh, two weeks ago, we had a massive breakdown of uh, oil. We went all the way down to $36. And uh, last week, we, we basically had a rally in oil. We uh, closed just underneath the 50 moving average. And from here, I do expect us to basically stay for a while before we go back to the downside. And the reason why I say that is because um, demand for oil just isn't there at the moment. We had a very, very, very uh, long period of, of uh, basically stagnation in this market. And then we broke down significantly. And this was basically due to the Saudi, Saudis going out and saying that they were going to increase production. And if this market breaks down this quickly because of uh, basically one bad news, then that is a really bad sign for this market. Uh, we did, uh, the price did increase, uh, but we came up short. If we basically stopped, uh, a top of the 50 moving average, I would expect this market to go higher. But because we, we landed underneath the 50 moving average, uh, we will most likely see this market um, stay here probably for, for some time and then we'll go and retest the 36 um, level again and uh, probably lower than that. So this should be really concerning for this market due to the fact that uh, the world economy is in a really bad shape and um, it will probably take months or even years for us to get back to the same levels as we were prior to the coronavirus we should expect this market to go lower if if world economies don't uh, cut back on production of oil significantly well, then prices will go lower. And last time I did this video, I had a prediction that we would most likely go and retest these Fibonacci retracements. So we may well see uh, in a few weeks time, um, the prices fall back to $30, uh, $30 a barrel, um, probably all, all the way down to 25. Um, and most of the, and the reason why I say that is because the coronavirus is still a massive problem for the world economy. Uh, a vaccine will probably be introduced uh, end of this year, in best cases, uh, but a vaccine will not be available in large quantity until basically next year, if technically there is a vaccine. Um, and that will take, have a toll on airlines, it will have a toll on transportation, it will have basically a, on the economy as a whole. Demand will not go back to previous levels as long as we are in this situation. And we are already seeing a second wave of coronavirus in Europe. Uh, it basically never stopped in the United States. And that can basically make this market go um, fall apart like it did um, in February, March, um, and so on. So next target, if we basically break uh, 36 level, we'll go to 35. I have this uh, resistant uh, support area here. And if that breaks, we'll go down to 30 and we'll go down to 25. And, and in worst case scenario, we'll go down to $21 a barrel. I don't really see an upside to this market. Um, um, no, technically don't see an upside. Every um, uh, increase of price is basically an opportunity to basically short this market at this point. So uh, if we look at natural gas, so this was completely expected. Uh, natural gas got way up ahead of itself and it broke down significantly uh, last week. 
However, I don't expect the natural gas to to break the 50 moving average uh, or the 20, or the 200 moving average at all. Uh, natural gas needed this pullback in order to go higher from here. Um, as long as the weather conditions are as they are in the United States at the moment, uh, then natural gas will go uh, go higher. So um, we will probably. Uh, test the 50 moving average and then we'll bounce uh, from here and then we'll go higher. And we can see the MACD, for example, it is uh, getting quite negative. It's heading. Um, uh, so it will probably take uh, next week, uh, probably two weeks before we start going higher. Uh, the stochastic is also quite negative, uh, but the RSI is basically pointing upwards. So we're not in oversold condition, we're not overbought condition. Um, so at this moment, just wait for the bounce and that is a, a good buying opportunity for natural gas. Yes, if we look at copper. So copper uh, has uh, rallied since we had this uh, bullish flag here and it's continuing to bull uh, to uh, to increase in price at this point we are running into uh, quite a lot of uh, resistance um, it, this is an area that has historically been uh, tough to get through to be very honest if you can see this area here so we'll probably grind slowly uh, upwards any Pull back to the 50 moving average is a buying opportunity. Um, if we were to break the 50 moving average, we'll probably uh, go and test uh, the 200 moving average. Um, in worst cases, uh, we'll go down to this area here, just underneath the 200 moving average. But copper is really, really bullish and has been really bullish for a very long time. And... Um, and as long as um, it doesn't break the 50 moving average, there is no uh, concern in this market that is just a buy every single dip. Uh, we can see also indicators. We are not overbought at this moment. The RSI is pointing upwards. Uh, the stochastic is also uh, is also very bullish, and the MACD is basically it's just above the signal line, so it's also pointing upwards. Momentum. Um, we are quite overstretched at this moment you see the distance between the 50 moving average and the 200 moving average uh, it's quite significant so i would not be surprised if we had a a, 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 a big pullback in next week's um, trading session something similar to this candle here uh, however every single pullback in this um, in this uh, case is a buying opportunity for for uh, copper so if you look at the gold market, so gold is still uh, hovering just above the 50 moving average. And at this point, I am not very bullish on gold. I do expect at this point gold to probably break down, uh, basically due to the, um, to the stock market. Uh, because we have seen quite negative um, news in the stock market and usually gold basically follows that. In the long run, of course, gold is really, really bullish. But at this point, I would not be, uh, be surprised if we break the 50 moving average and go much lower from here. If we were to break the 50 moving average, of course, 1900 is uh, is uh, is massive support, and if 1900 breaks, uh, then we'll go all the way down to this area here, which is around uh, this area here. Sorry, this area here, here, uh, which is around 1800, and that would basically be a good thing for this market. It is quite overextended. It's not just uh, not as overextended as silver is, but it is quite overextended. And uh, a pullback to the 1800 level would be technically a good thing. That would be um, a very good buying opportunity if that were the case. If we were to break this upper uh, support uh, line here, we'll go to 2000 and then 2000, 
50 and then probably to 2100. However, that is not what I expect is going to happen due to um, the decline in the star in the stock market. So, but in the long run, we will most likely uh, go and retest the 2100. Uh, but at this moment, I would just wait because we need to break out of this uh, triangle triangle here. If we break to the upside, we'll go to 2000, 2000. If we go to the downside, probably the first thing we'll test is 1900. If we look at the indicators, uh, we're not overbought and not oversold, but we are basically pointing upwards. The stochastic is uh, is a downward momentum and uh, the MACD is technically flat at this moment. So I would not not make a massive investment at this moment. This is basically wait and see what is going to happen in this market. If we look at silver. We can see it's very similar to silver. However, uh, silver is needs a massive pullback. We are basically we have been trading uh, sideways uh, for quite a long time now, so that is also a good thing um, because you can see the distance between the the fifty moving average and the two hundred moving average. Um, this distance has to um, has to get smaller. Uh, otherwise, we we um, may expect a massive pullback at some point. However, as long as we are uh, trading sideways, these these two moving averages will get closer to each other. So, similar to gold, we are also getting very close to this uh, triangle here. We will have a breakout to the upside or a downside. Uh, if we were to break down to the downside, the 50 moving average is support. Uh, this area here will also be support around 25, uh, $24. And if we break that, then we go all the way down to the 200 moving average, which will be around $20 at that point. If we were to break to the upside, uh, we would go and test at 28 and then uh, around 29 $30. $30. Um, this is very similar to gold. This is just wait and see what technically happens if it breaks to the downside or the upside. This is still a um, bullish market, so shorting this market is not a good idea. Um, if you look at the MACD, we are still in a downward trajectory. We are quite bearish at this moment. The same goes for the stochastic. We are quite bearish and also the RSI. So most likely we'll break to the downside and retest this 50, uh, test this 50 moving average first. So if we look at Kakoa, so we did not go all the way down to the uh, 200 moving average, which I expected last week, last week's uh, video. However, we got quite close and then we basically went straight up again. And this is a really bullish sign. We are actually making higher lows. You start one here, one here, and one here. So do expect us to retest this level at, at uh, 2.7. And if that basically uh, breaks, then we'll go all the way down up to this area here, which is 2.855. And then we'll go to the all-time highs after 2.996. Um, We'll have a golden crossing here at some point, probably next week, and we'll see a lot of volatility at that point as well. We are not overbought, not oversold, but we are basically at the edge. Uh, we may see a little bit of pullback before we go higher. And the reason why I say that is because the stochastic is quite bearish at this point, um, and the uh, MACD is quite flat at the moment. So in this case, every pullback is a buying opportunity. This is not a market that you should short at the moment uh, because it is basically indicating that it's, it's basically on a uh, bull run and so on. And lastly, platinum. Um, similar to, to, to copper, platinum has been on a bullish run all the way back to the end of March. 
when it basically uh, broke down significantly and uh, now we are almost at the old uh, these highs prior to the coronavirus um, the 50 moving average has been significant support and um, and um, as long as that doesn't break then a buying opportunity is every time we get basically close to the 50 moving average at this point i would wait because the technical indicators are very uh, bearish at the moment uh, we can see the rsi is heading basically downwards the stochastic is pointing to significantly downwards and the macd is about to cross the signal line indicating that we'll go lower from here we have broken through several times um, or tested several times the 50 moving average but we never um, closed below the 50 moving average so we'll probably see something similar to this candlestick here we go below the 50 moving average and if we stop above then expect this market to go higher um, if we have a candlestick uh, red candlestick that basically closes beneath the 50 moving average then we are probably going to retest or test this if 200 moving average uh, but at this point this is uh, a bullish market and it's not a market that you should basically short it's basically every pullback is a buying opportunity so hope you find this uh, video helpful you're welcome to support our channel by subscribing and hitting the like button and um, click the bell button if you want to see our newest videos uh, good luck and thank you very much Thank you.